DMMs, or digital multimeters are a critical piece of equipment to have on or near your workbench. Welcome hey. back. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What's up? Well, I recently heard that a DMM is a critical piece of equipment to have on or near your workbench. So how do I pick one? Okay, so that's at least a good question. If you have a specific, I need to measure something situation, then picking a DMM, like any piece of test equipment, is a little bit easier since you have a filter to work from. Yeah, but I just need a DMM. Can't you just tell me what the best one is and the cheapest? Okay, so let's keep something in mind. Either you want to upgrade to a new model or this is your first DMM that you're considering, which means there are a lot of variables at play. So it may not be possible for me to give you tailored guidelines beyond get one with auto ranging and enough voltage range for whatever you're trying to do. In this video, I try to cover most of the considerations so that you can decide if a particular meter is a good fit for you. Don't forget to talk about the price too. And with that, welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James. Let's go pick. Full disclosure, some of the DMMs I show were sent to me by the Element 14 community, while some I bought on my own. With the exception of the super cheap red one I show later, I recommend any of these. Now, here is a brief list of the major characteristics of a DMM, and then after that, we'll get into some additional considerations. Measurements are what it measures, things like voltage, current, and resistance. Counts is how many digits are on the display. Accuracy is how well the meter can measure the actual quantity. Some meters have an analog-like bar graph to help visualize where the reading falls within the active range setting. Backlights help to read the display, but can drain the battery. True RMS means the RMS value is more accurate for signals other than a sine wave. For example, both of these measures are measuring the same amplitude square wave. Auto ranging automatically selects the best available range for increased resolution and accuracy, while manual ranging means you have to do this yourself. Temperature is for measuring with a thermocouple, which is often included with the meter. Four millimeter banana jacks are the typical connection to a DMM. CAT or CAT is the measurement category from one to four of what suitable voltage environment the meter or its probes can be safely used in. When in doubt, select the higher category. NCV is a non-contact voltage measurement for finding active electric fields. For example, here it detects a field only when this power strip connected to mains is switched on. With relative mode, you can set a baseline measurement and then each measurement after shows the difference or relative change. This feature is useful for sorting components by their values. Hold, min, and max filters the measurements shown on the display. For example, here we can see what is the highest voltage available from any of these batteries. While statistics keep track of a history of measurements that allow us to see min, max, average, and standard deviation. Four wire measurements are a Kelvin connection to accurately measure very low resistances like below one ohms. Host USB ports and Bluetooth options allow a DMM to act as a data logger and connections such as LAN, USB, serial, and GPIB mean it can be integrated into an automated test. Whew. Any questions? I know that's a lot, so I made a chart as a PDF which you can download in the show notes on the Element 14 community. Let me know over there if I missed any. For now, let's talk about form factors. Like all versatile tools, DMMs come in a wide range of form factors and prices. Handheld DMMs are probably what you think of when you think digital multimeter. You can hold it in your hand or use its kickstand. And being battery powered means you can make measurements almost anywhere. These usually have a place to plug in probes at the bottom, a display on the top to display values, and a selector dial for the mode or range. It seems like everyone's first DMM is the manual ranging style. And while there are a few benefits to these, I recommend an auto ranging, especially for a first meter. Getting a reading is less confusing and they are easier to use when your hands are busy with the probes. Which I am not saying that manual ranging is bad or unusable. I am just saying I recommend a meter with auto ranging. After all, you can always manually change the range. Bench DMMs almost always have more counts and significantly tighter accuracy compared to a handheld. They usually offer more measurements and commonly include a four wire measurement. Some of these can display two measurements at once. However, it only makes one measurement at a time, as the internal relay tells us. These meters can trade off precision for speed. 
They can sample much faster than a handheld, but then you do not get their banner resolution spec. With their more advanced displays, you can get readouts, such as graphs, of the measurement statistics. If you have room on your bench for one of these, they're great because they're always available and they have a lot of extra capability. Like, for example, there are usually remote connectivity options for use in an automated test system or when it gets mounted into a test rack. Now, there are a couple of other form factors that we should cover. For example, there are some Bluetooth-only types that use a phone as a display. I do like some things about this one, but it isn't sold anymore, and frankly, I dislike having the probes, the measurement unit, and the mobile device all in one area just to use it. Some oscilloscopes include a full-on built-in DMM, and that is a nice alternative to a bench DMM next to a bench oscilloscope. It's good to have if you can get it, but personally, I'd rather just have a separate DMM. Also, this idea is not new. This old Tech 465 from the 1970s and 80s includes a dedicated DMM module as an option. Also available on the market are these DMMs, which are the opposite. They're a DMM with a scope-like screen. They sample faster than a traditional DMM and then draw waveforms. I don't have a lot of experience with these, but my feeling is they're not really fast enough to be very usable as an oscilloscope, and they're relatively expensive to be a DMM. But let me know over on the Element 14 community if you've used one of these and what you think of it. Last, clamp meters have a big clamp on them. They measure current through a cable and are great for high current applications as long as you can get access to only one of the conductors. Clamping around both does not work. Also, you can buy just clamp probes for use with your DMM. Oh my gosh, can we talk about how many money units to spend yet? Okay, let's talk about price next. The price ranges I consider are less than $10, $20 to $50, and more than $100. In general, the more you spend, the more capabilities, accuracy, and precision you get. Basic measurements like voltage, current, continuity, resistance, and diode are going to be found on almost all meters. Higher end models may add measurements like frequency, capacitance, and temperature, and sometimes more. Again, if you have a specific need like measuring frequency, then that will help make your decision easier. If not, don't get stressed out that one meter you're looking at measures frequency, and another measures capacitance. There are usually other ways to make those kinds of measurements with a clever circuit and any DMM. That said, for a first DMM, I do suggest something in the $20 to $50 range. Even at $20, you can find a decent auto ranging meter. The $40 to $50 range almost always has interesting secondary features to consider. For example, the Multicomp Pro that I use daily has Bluetooth low energy, which can be used for data logging. Or you can stream the values in real time to an application that displays the values as an overlay in a video. Pretty fancy for a multimeter that only costs like 40 bucks, right? And by the way, don't get super wrapped up in accuracy either. Most handhelds only have three digits of precision anyway. Does 1.215 versus 1.220 volts matter in most cases? Probably not. Which is why I think it is better to pick a budget and some measurement capabilities first, then consider the accuracy options available from there. Which does make me want to mention brand names real quick. As you probably know, some brands will cost more than others with seemingly similar capabilities. The physical differences are going to be build quality, the probes that come with the DMM, and well, they usually have tighter accuracy. If you're going to use a DMM every day and rely on it to make money, then I would probably consider spending at least $100 and pay attention to the brand name. For occasional use, I would do like all of my other tools. I'll spend a little bit less on the first one and wait for it to break before spending more on a better one, if that even ever happens. Personally, I really like the idea of a budget DMM with a lot of capability and then spending money on aftermarket probes like these. They are more comfortable to hold, have more pliable silicone leads, thicker wires, and the tips are sharper. Also, these happen to be gold-plated. And these will work with pretty much any future DMM that I buy. By the way, another option are banana to mini grabber style, which are excellent for hands-off measurements. Even though I was using my hands in that clip, but I think you get the point. They're actually really helpful to clip the ground lead and then just use the probe to poke around a circuit. Getting into all the kinds of probes available would be an entire video on its own. There are many options and kits available. My point here is that you might want to use some of your budget on those kinds of accessories. Okay, so we reviewed capabilities, form factors, pricing, and even touched on probes. Any other questions? No, James. Thank you for addressing all of my concerns. If I had more, is there some place I could go? Head over to the Element 14 community. I put together a long list of previous videos, community content related to DMMs, and links to the products shown in this video. Remember, that is the best place to ask me questions because I get notified and then I can answer them, sometimes with pictures. 
As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to multi-pole measurements using a multimeter on my electronics workbench. What the heck? I always thought it was pronounced multimeter. 